in this video we are going to create an h2o wave app which will allow us to display your data pre-process your data as well as train and predict data on different algorithms so when you click on the show data button it is going to display the data that we have which is a data frame and similarly when we click on the pre-process button it's going to pre-process the data and you can see the uh, missing values getting filled as per the pre-processing techniques used all right so this is how you can display your pre-processed data as well similarly if you click on the train and predict button what it, it is going to create another card so if you scroll you can see the random forest and the decision tree two buttons getting created when you click on one it is now going to train your random forest algorithm and it is going to predict it so it will it, it creates another card with the predictions and it says that the model trained successfully so the same thing can be done when you click on the decision trees button so that will create another card on the right saying your de uh, decision tree model trained successfully along with the predictions so this is what we are going to create in this video and you can you can find the entire code on my github i have the entire code on my github you can uh, contribute to it if you have any more improvements on this let's look at the code now so this is the code so at the beginning we are importing the libraries that we are going to use so before going to see the h2o wave code we will look at the machine learning part i'll just give you a brief about what i'm doing here and then we'll look at the h2o wave code okay so i have my two functions where i'm loading the training data and i have another function which is loading the test data i'm calling those functions and uh, storing them into these variables right next i have another function which is the pre-processing function so note that the video is not to understand how pre-processing techniques and all the machine learning part works so i've done some basic pre-processing and this is what you see in this particular function all right so the pre-processing is called over here and yes i'm doing that for both training and testing data set okay next we have the two functions uh, which are actually training your models. So one is the random forest and the other is a decision tree All right. The one that you will see when we click on this button, right? Now let's look at the code where we are actually using h2o wave So if you see here, so this is where it starts. So I have uh, an app uh, routing where it is routing to this particular link So this is where you can see so once after the local host you have that slash demo and this particular function starts running okay in that we have an uh, asynchronous function uh, which is uh, which has the parameters of query and we are going to take the arguments uh, from the in the variable q all right so so let's start building this navigation bar that we have at the top so if i scroll down so this is where you see the navigation tab so in h2o wave we are going to use the tab card function that actually creates this navigation bar at the top all right so the position is set if you have seen my last video you know uh, you know how the box parameters are so this is the column width uh, column row width and height that's how it works and then we have the items so the items that we want onto the navigation bar are these so show data pre-process train and predict are the labels that we have now what do we have what do we understand by this hashtag show data so whenever you click on this hashtag show data hashtag preprocess or hashtag train it's going to link it to the particular function that we want to run all right so these are the items on the navigation bar and we have the link where it should actually go to okay so let's see that now so when i scroll at the top if you see i have hash equal to q dot arguments in bracket i've written hash all right so this is what we are going to compare so if hash if you if it founds if it finds any uh, argument what it's going to do it's going it's going to go into into this if loop all right if statement and if, if inside this statement if it finds show data pre-process or train 
is going to uh, execute this part all right so when i click on the show data it uh, shows me this data right so what has happened here so this is the link that we uh, that it is connecting to okay so if you see you now have demo hashtag show data this is what it is executing let's go to that part and when we do when we go there you can see what i'm doing is i have another i have, I have a page which says change the items of the show data to text right so if you see what i'd done earlier is i had created a form card okay that form card has some text called as display your data here similarly i have another one which says pre-processing of data okay so this is what you see all right and what i'm doing is the ui dot text whenever the show data or pre-process is clicked change the ui text to this particular text now what does this text do this te text actually takes your data and displays it here this is a data frame all right so how do i make my data frame display it on my h onto my h2o wave app so what i've done here is if you go, go and look at the documentation you'll find this i've created two functions which which are make markdown row and the make markdown table one of them takes values and the other takes fields and rows right and i'm using these two functions here all right make mark, markdown table and what i'm doing is in the fields column i'm uh, converting my data frame columns to a list i'm converting all my rows to values again to another list right this is this is how you can display your data frame onto your h2o wave app okay and i've done the same thing for pre-processing as well okay now for pre-processing if you see the uh, variable that i'm passing that i'm converting to to list is a train variable now this train variable is taken when we had converted our pre-processing our original data using this function the pre-processing function right so that's how you display it now let's see the training and the predicting part as well so when the user clicks on the train and predict button over here it will go in this particular link and then that link what we are going to do is we are going to create a new form card and the new form card is uh, created at this particular position and the items on that uh, card will be a text and two buttons and these two buttons are in turn linked to rf and dt hashes right so when the user clicks on each of the buttons here of each of the buttons when the user clicks it it will try to find the rf hash which is over here right now in rf hash what i'm doing is i'm going to create a form card this form card says that uh, it, it has a progress which says running right and when it when it displays that on the next what we have we can see is the function that we had created earlier for training and predicting as well so await q dot run run this function and these two parameters okay so if i go at the top you can see i have the rf function and two parameters right so the first parameter is used to train so this is the machine learning training and predicting part that you see so i'm fitting the train and i'm using the test parameter to test on the data set right and uh, predict the values once the values are predicted i'm going i'm creating it into a data frame and i'm returning the data frame back and this data frame is caught in the values variable okay and i have a message that says rf model has been trained successfully once this is done it will create another card right it will say at a position 1 12 5 5 and the items on that bar will be the message that we uh, defined it here and uh, the y underscore predict value that we caught in the values variable and you're going to convert it just like before and the rows also will convert and it will be displayed right so that is what we saw at the first at the start of the video okay so similarly when the user also clicks on the dt decision tree button it will try to find the dt hashtag hash and it will create another box 
it will again say dt model trained successfully uh, it will be at an, another position now because we have two different algorithms that we want to mess uh, that we want to display the prediction values and here also it will uh, take it into a variable called values we'll convert them and then we will display it using this function just like earlier we did it for show data uh, button when it was clicked so this is how you can use the h2 wave to create your web application that can train and predict based on the models that you are using right so this is what i wanted to show you in this particular video i have the entire code uh, on my github you can use it you can tune it you can uh, contribute to, to contribute to it if you want there are multiple improvements that you can do over here you can add multiple algorithms you can also add your confusion matrix and evaluation matrix on the app itself which is which would be a good thing on the application so these things you can try on your own on your own on using h2o wave so that's it for this video thank you for watching if you like our content please like share and subscribe thank you